nada. Can't you can't master no sexual pleasure should happen before marriage. And some people even even believe that even after you get married, you should not masturbate. That masturbation in any form at any time, married or single, is not not allowed. Yeah. Hola, everybody. This is Lucilania. Hey, what's up? This is Steph coming at you live. Right? And and that's the part that's it, that we hope that you feel more empowered by is the more that you know, the more decisions and choices you can make for yourself, especially when it comes to your own spiritual walk and 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 your own um, your own uh, ideas about God and, and where you are versus completely being subjugated by ideas that, yes, could you control when you when you first were presented um, to them? No. You know, most of us went to church when we were kids. If I could find my mother, I would, but, you know, still got there. But there is a point where I think we stop um, thinking that we have the choice to really say, you know what, do I really believe this? Is this really part of my beliefs? Do I see this as being a long-term value that I want to now keep as part of my adulthood because once again most of the time we learn these things as kids and we're kids for quite a bit of a long time that by the time we become adults it can be really hard to then like shift from those ideas and feel like you know what i don't know what to do if i if i can't if i if, if i was to try to replace this so well and, and here's the thing outside of just the pleasure of it right me... and just enjoying the orgasm especially when Women who have sex with men statistically have less orgasms. That would probably change. Maybe not, you know, if, if they actually took ownership of their sexuality and started exploring their body through masturbation. There's a, I literally, I can't remember her name. I was, I was watching video scrolling and this doctor was on some national news program and she was saying like, Women should have should be having a minimum, minimum meaning baseline, three orgasms a week. And it was wild to me. I literally having a conversation with a group of women, and they're like three times a week, and I'm just like, that's a lot to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, better sketch, start scheduling those in. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I, I acknowledge my privilege because I am single and I have no kids. They had kids, mm -hmm. and they're like, well, you know, I'm just so tired. I'm like, it ain't gotta be long. It ain't got to be a full-blown sex session with your man. Like, but three times a week, yes. Sometimes you just, you get it in real quick and you just got to like, okay. And it's not even just, it's like, and I'm going to go down the list of, of reasons health-wise. Oh, why there's plenty. Is, uh, is something that they recommend for people assigned female at birth who want, or who masturbate they are more likely to have an orgasm during sexual relationships with their partner. About One, probably because you know your body, you know what it takes to get there. There are, and I did an episode about this, about all the, about like 20 different ways to orgasm. A lot of women struggle with orga with having an orgasm by just penetration. Oh yeah. And a combination yeah. of yeah. stuff, either clitoral stimulation, <clears throat> nipple stimulation, or, you know, whatever it is, they need more than just that. And so yeah. if you know how to get yourself to climax, how much more are you able to communicate with your partner or partners about what you like if you don't know what you like and you're expecting them to figure it out? And that's and actually for guys, that's actually a really important thing to realize was, is that penetration is not the the way that you, most times you'll get a woman to the climax it, it, in the movies you know <laughs> it's the movies you know it's not the real world so knowing that it actually becomes empowering because now it removes the pressure of a guy feeling like you know what if i can't get into climax through penetration then like i'm i'm, I'm no good i'm not big enough i don't know how to do it I, and, I, you know, whatever and it's like there's yeah. so many other avenues to be able to explore and i guarantee you that sh it'll be more memorable <laughs> if you just start way more memorable are you focusing on this there's a whole rest of the body like whole rest of the body um but again for female masturbation can also help provide relief from cramps it may lead to less vaginal dryness and decreased pain during sexual intercourse i don't know about y'all this i'm about to say it anyway <laughs> this probably is not i can't sit like i know people are like oh you probably be naked in your house i can't i can't 
<laughs> I'm sitting naked in the house and without even proof that I was sitting there. Um, I'm just <laughs> that. But outside of that, again, you have more orgasm, higher self esteem, increased mm. libido, greater satisfaction with your sex life, and maybe even your marriage because you have more orgasms. During pregnancy, you may feel a heightened sexual desire, yep. and masturbation can help release that sexual tension. It also may help ease some pregnancy symptoms, including lower back pain. See, gotta, gotta start, gotta start. And, and it work. For, men, for men, one of the main things that is a benefit to long term health for men is it may have a, it may, in, if they ejaculate frequently, they may have a lower risk of prostate cancer. Oh, that one I've definitely heard. Okay, if you can avoid cancer, because it, it often may prevent the buildup of cancer causing mm -hmm. agents in your prostate gland, which does again. And, and, and unfortunately, there'll be those who are like, well, how did I still get it? If you know, listen, this is all about things that you can do to help that are the benefit of, right? So don't start, come back to, the, well, I masturbate all the time and I still got, listen. Lower, <laughs> listen. lower your stress. I had, I saw this one girl, she was like, before she makes any serious decision, she goes, she, she goes and masturbates. And it's just like, because the clarity is like, okay, you can just bring yourself down with anxiety or whatever, just kind of release that. And she's able to make a much more clear decision after she's masturbated and had an orgasm. I'm sorry. Well, you, got the, you got the oxytocin, you got the dopamine. I mean, you got you got some things happening in there that help to provide that clarity too. That are, again, scientifically, you know, this is not stuff we're just making up here. Um, even though some of you will still say we are. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> And, I mean, and like you were saying earlier, you know, there people think and there have been perpetuated these myths about masturbation that research has not proven any of them to be true. Masturbation does not cause vision loss. It does not cause hairy <laughs> palms. Know. I've never heard no. that. No one ever like your hair. Your palms are going to get hairy. Um, that's, that's about, um, mental illness. It does not cause a man's penis to shrink. Or no. curve. Now, if it did cause curve, that might not be a bad thing. Um, <laughs> nice curve. Uh, it does not decrease sperm counts. It does not cause erectile dysfunction. Nope. We just said it can increase sexual desire. So, no, it does not lower the libido. It does not cause infer infertility. And whoever's saying that bullshit is insensitive as hell. And But they could have unwanted side effects. The main one that they say is guilt. But that side effect mm -hmm. of guilt is overwhelmingly coming from religion mm -hmm. or spiritual or cultural beliefs. Because there, I know there are some cultures that also, that outside of religion also don't believe in this. <laughs> or even just the fact that um, one of the myths is uh, people only masturbate when they're alone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I think that's something to be mindful of is the fact that because people do this majority of the time in, in privacy, right? It it adds this element in in the church context as oh, you know, this is something done in secret. This is something that um, you're trying to hide, and it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> this is not good. once again. This is not something for public dis display. Um, I would like my freedom. Okay, I like my yeah, exactly. Uh, but again. We take sometimes, or sometimes the the things that m make it, how can I say this? It's the things that are personal to us and the things that allow us to go within ourselves seem to always be the thing that is demonized. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a very intentional thing to get us to be disconnected from who, from ourselves, our feelings, our desires, our mm -hmm. thoughts, our ideas. That is, you know, no, you're supposed to think what we tell you to think and live the way we're supposed to, we tell you to live because you don't know. As opposed to know. teaching me and guiding me, which is not the same. I know they believe that that's what they're doing, but teaching and guiding involves empowerment. This type of guilt and shame that you are giving people about their bodies and touching their bodies is not empowering at all. Mm -hmm. It's as if y'all really, it's like y'all say it as if masturbation is something new. When again, historians will tell you that there's proof of mass, that they've been masturbating for centuries. 
older oh, than oh. the Bible. Oh, yeah. I mean that they they're even like some uh they've dug up some some graves, you know, which I don't I don't believe in. But you know, <laughs> I guess we don't get this information unless they do that. We're like we're like digging up some Egyptians, like they were buried with things that look like a dildo, that look like a crystal wand. And it's that of course people oh, that's not what I'm like, but there are a lot of things that look like masturbatory tools. Mm -hmm. so this is not a because, 1900 because they wanted them to be able to pleasure themselves in the afterlife listen <laughs> bury me with my ass baby okay if I can't take my nigga with me then at least let me take my ass because <laughs> like, at this point I feel like like okay and I, I say this all the time and I'll probably be 99 years old and saying this to these women we are the only Beings on this earth, humans on this earth that were that was given an organ that only has one function, which is pleasure, and that is our clitoris. I will say it until I'm old and frail. And you can't tell me that God did not create us for pleasure if God also created us with an organ that has no other function. If, he, if God did not care then why would we be created with that, with the clitoris? And make it so that if you do not stimulate your clitoris, you are at risk of losing it. It can collapse within itself. And I would cry because me and my clit are, we buddies. <laughs> she make, she make me feel good. I know how to, like, I would cry. Like if you've never stimulated your clitoris, you don't know what you're missing. And I encourage you today. If it's been a while. Today. <laughs> come on, come on. Let me do the awesome <laughs> If you have not touched your clitoris or it has not been touched by someone else, I beg of you. <sighs> do not lose it, okay? Don't lose it. I don't know how long it takes. I don't know. I'm not trying to find out. But I encourage you. Do not miss the blessing in your clitoris. God, you would be, you, you want to know what's a sin? to misuse and abuse what God created. That would be a sin. God created that for your pleasure and you're not using it because some pastor told you, some first lady told you that touching that means you're a Jezebel or you're a whore. Mm -hmm. mm, them, F them. Because again, there's like doctors, <laughs> researchers have not found, there is no other purpose. I think it would be interesting if people were honest about how they came into being. Let, let's, I mean, let, let, how did, how, you know, let, we, we would like to all believe that there was a stork <laughs> that dropped us in the I think they knew that. They knew that. They knew that. They knew that. Just like y'all really want, I never believed in Santa for that reason. Like, we ain't got no damn, no, no damn fireplace. And I don't get no gifts, so and I was good. I I didn't get in trouble, so how, I didn't get kissed. Santa did, Santa don't exist. I ain't. Yeah, no, it, you know. it was always like, in those. It was always in those cartoons. But why do we want to propagate an idea that goes against the idea that in reality we were probably conceived in ways. We probably would never really want to know. Okay. Like the, the, the process involved. <laughs> okay. In one way or another, because it would probably, it would be horrific to me to find out that my mother had sex oh. and she and did enjoy it. That would be horrific. I don't want the group the the the, no, the no, details no. if it was I'm hanging off a chandelier either, because you know that's my mother, but like I I fear that a lot of a lot of mothers have had children during sexual experiences that they didn't enjoy because mm -hmm. they were literally being told it wasn't for their enjoyment. And that it, that is so misogynistic and sexist and, and whatever word you want to put in there, I'm sure there are more that I could use because <clears throat> most men are going to orgasm during a sexual, during almost every sexual experience, unless they choose not to, of course, health issues, whatever. I was like, mm -hmm. but statistically, Men are ejaculating. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, the, it's the running joke. It's the running joke, right? I mean, how many times do you hear it's like, we have had songs. <laughs> and you ain't getting nothing except a baby. And that baby is literally rearranging your insides 
and affecting, and you got to carry this leech for 10 months, <laughs> and then you got to feed the baby and, and be the one that's primarily responsible for it, and you didn't at least get pleasure when the when the baby was conceived? No wonder you don't like sex. Maybe they even not like, like the child. No either. wonder you don't like sex, because <laughs> you have to take care of the consequence of it, and you didn't even enjoy the process like he did. That's the whole tale. And, as a, and I'm like, I remember watching a video, and I, I almost even reposted. I was like, I don't even want to share this because I don't want other people listening to this and thinking it's real. And so I'm not even going to mention their names, but it was a husband and wife, and they were talking about how people needed to detox from their sex, you know, their sex lives, you know, as it because you know, sex is dirty outside of marriage. Um, but one of the things that that they said, amongst the many things that was like problematic for me, was how the reason why you need to detox is because. You only know what you like based off what you've had, the experience that you've had with other people. And so if you go and tell your husband, oh, like this, you know, I like this, this, and the other, it's like you're comparing him to that person. And I'm like, that's it. Y'all are y'all are so insecure. Mm-hmm. And you are literally preaching this type of insecurity that a woman isn't supposed to know what she likes, whether it was because such and such did it or whether because she saw it and it turned her on or whether it was because she touched herself. You can't handle a woman owning her sexuality and being like, I don't like that, or I want this. Actually, I like it. I would like it if you choked me and called me a pretty little slut. That makes you feel less than a man? Take notes. For a woman to be able to tell you what she likes and that and, and, and literally justifying <laughs> these men gaslighting <laughs> and abusing their women if they do speak up. Because you shouldn't know what you like. You should only have had that experience with your husband. And so essentially, I get to tell you what you like because I am your only experience. And that is such a fucking problem. Because let's say that woman has stayed a virgin. She doesn't get to say, she still, like, you still get to accuse her of, mm-hmm. of, of violating the, the sanctity of marriage if she says hey you know let's try this and you're like where you get that from how you know about that <clears throat> what does it matter maybe i don't like it maybe i do okay i didn't realize i had a praise kink until i started scrolling tiktok and it was like <laughs> the girl and i was like oh. that is not funny. Oh. I like being called good girl like oh. if y'all have not listened to the song nasty by russ Go listen to it. It is a praise kink girl's dream. Okay. And he about to drop mm-hmm. an alternate ending, which is like even better. But like shit, there are men, black men specifically, that growl on TikTok. And I ain't know. I ain't never had no man <laughs> growl for me. But that primal kind of whew, <laughs> just chills down my spine. Take notes. <laughs> what? And so it's like. So I get married, or in my case, because I'm not waiting until I get married, but I get into another relationship, get into a relationship with, with, with my dude, and I'm like, you know, I like this. Like, it's okay. Make noise. I, I like when you make noise. I like when you moan. I like when you growl. I like, call me a good girl. Talk well, me through my awesome. orgasm. Tell me how pretty I am when I'm touching myself or when I'm taking you in. Like, and and, and he is so... his. His self, if his self esteem is that bad, that he is immediately going to where did where did she experience this? Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of cultural. Because think about it, how many times we listen to music and we want the the bad bees, right? The the bad bitches that will, you know, we we want them, right? We want them, but they don't come without the confidence, the experience, the trials, the tribulations. There's things that make them who they are, and yet we just want to pocket this one thing about them and then all the rest of it's like well we we like we know you got to be that way but we really just want this part of it mm-hmm. right and <laughs> you can't, and you can't okay. say it <laughs> i just thought of something i know i know <laughs> because it's like and that's the thing it, it's it's the hypocrisy of it all because even whether you in church or not we get all these men who judge women for being sexually empowered you know or being on only fans or being a sex worker or being a hoe whatever you you know because there is no one definition like i could have sex with one person and somebody call me a hoe um but yet the women who are 
chaste and demure and modest, you would think that they would be the ones getting kicked up. Because the way that you, the, the thing that most men are describing that they want already exists. Mm -hmm. And these women who believe, and, and, and for a time, even myself, believe, okay, well, this is the way that they told me to do it. And one of the reasons why I started questioning all these things is because like, I'm like, okay, I'm not ugly. I have a degree. I take care of myself. I'm not a gold digger. But I'm not necessarily making six figures. So I'm not going to emasculate him because I make too much. I'm not having sex. I go out, but not too much. I don't, you know, I don't dress too, too sexy. And yet mm -hmm. still, there's, a, there's something, there's a problem. And they told me that this was the way. And yet, it's not. For many, many women who have been in church, whether they have some who have literally never had sex, some who have, and you know, you kind of go through the cycles of, all right, I'm celibate again. Oh, I, I slipped, whatever that is. I was like, but there are women out there that fit the criteria that these men say that they want and that they need in order to value them as a wife. And yet they don't go get them because it's not about that. It's about wanting, it's, it's not fun to control a woman who's fitting into the, into the, the avatar that you say you want. It only feels fulfilling if you can get the bad bitch and and shrink her down and control her and capture her like she's a lightning bug and put her in your in your hand. Because you gotta feel like you conquered it. That the the accomplishment only comes if you feel like you've won something. I think that's so the way. Leaving her be where she is because she don't fit. You don't really. That's because it's not what you really want. You don't know what you want other than to feel like a man. Well, I think that's the, isn't that always the thing where like you see guys who like they're with a certain woman and that woman has now become like the prize, mm -hmm. right? Forget personality, forget what she brings to the table, forget what she looks. And again, we're, we're, we're as, as men, as individuals, do we have attraction to people? Yes, we do. Like, I mean, I'm not going to pretend as if when I met my wife that the only thing I was interested in was her mind. <laughs> like, I mean, I love her mind, but I love other things too. Uh, but there is there is a, a sense of you've been captured. You've been dominated. I've, I've been able to achieve this. Now I can move on to the next prize at hand. And what does that say? You know, I, I'm for in, in some ways, in some ways, I don't I, I don't have a daughter, I have a son. But I find it always interesting how if you were to take a guy who had some of these very toxic IDs, right? And you know, maybe to his partner, you know, let's say a woman, he had you know, he feels this way very strongly, right? But then if I reworded re this and said, well, would you be okay if you had a daughter and a guy was just like you and had these ideas and wanted to dominate her, wanted to consider her just to be the prize? That's not you were, and, and, or, and or, and or, would you even be okay with the way that your own mother, aunt, is subjugated in a way in a relationship? You've seen it. You obviously don't feel like you could say anything, but you love her enough that you want the best for her, wish the best for her, but does that have a limit when it comes to your idea of worth and value for her? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and that's something that I've, I, you know, I think sometimes I've had to tell people, you know, I I, I grew up predominantly um, with a lot of women in my life. And, and you know, and then there were men in my life who came and, and supported me and, and helped me as well, but a lot of women in my life. And that actually hasn't made me weak it's actually in, in many ways has been a strength because I've been able to appreciate the fact that these women, sometimes despite the challenges that they've had, they still had the rise to the occasion. And if I had any weak ideas about them, it all went out the door because once again, I am where I am because of them as well as the men also in my life, my father, you know, my uncle, whomever. But these ideas, when we just, when we don't really look at them and investigate them for what they really are as just being just, just bad. I mean, I mean, they're just bad. But you know, as long as they're only applied to like the women we're with, it's all good. 
Mm. Right. I don't think about all the, the mothers and, and, you know, shout out to all the moms out there, you know, all the other women taking care, being the caretakers of whomever. Are you okay with going to your mom's or going to your aunt's house? I'm like, you know what? I really think that uh, you don't have the framework or the, the knowledge or the experience or the fortitude to think for yourself. Uh, you know, for that raise that you want to get at work, stop trying. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't work hard enough like these guys These guys work. Um, and that always, like, and, and that's sometimes what has, you know, I can't say, I'm, I'm not perfect, but it's kind of kept me in check a little bit when it comes to challenging my own ideas about masculinity, my own ideas about patriarchy, my own ideas about femininity, because I reminded the people and the impact those those ideas can have on those relationships. So something to think about. If you got a daughter out there, you got some women in your life that you truly care about, love and love dearly, how do those ideas hold up to them? Mm -hmm. Leave you there. <laughs> that is a perfect way to wrap up this episode. Wrap it up. Um, <laughs> masturbation. Um, <laughs> you know, just question. Yeah. Question anything and anyone that is is telling you anything that is taking you away from yourself, mm -hmm. as opposed to empowering you, empowering those you love. Anyone or anything that is denying your humanity or the humanity of the of those you love and those you cherish and enjoy yeah yes enjoy like she said <laughs> <laughs> find a way <laughs> whatever way you feel you need to mm -hmm. so i we're gonna end this episode um in a way that i haven't done in a while i'm gonna start bringing back at least for the next four we'll see about next season um with a mindful moment so hold on tight i and we're going to end with a mindful moment and then um yeah make sure you're in a safe place not driving operating heavy machinery um but if this is where you end be as radiant as the sun and we mm -hmm. will see you next week bye yep, yep. see you later have fun. Thank you for joining me for this sensual, mindful meditation. To start, I want you to find a comfortable place where you can sit or lie down without any distractions. Once you've gotten comfortable in whatever position you've chosen, let's begin by taking some deep breaths allowing yourself to relax and to let go of any tension in your body. <sighs> Inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. the stress melt away. With each and every breath. Now bring attention to your breath, breathing slowly and deeply. Continuing to inhale through your nose and through your mouth. Letting every single distraction that might come up just wash away. With every exhale. Feel the air moving in and out of your body and let your breath become your anchor, bringing you into the present moment. As you continue to breathe, now 
bring awareness back into your body. Noticing any sensations that arise without judgment or analysis. Simply observe how your body feels with each and every inhale and exhale. You to bring attention to the soles of your feet, to your toes, and to your ankles. You might squeeze your toes and then release. Roll your ankles around in circles. Send all your energy your feet. If you enjoyed this sensual, mindful moment, then you're going to want to make sure that you have liked and subscribed and enabled your notifications so when I upload the rest of this video later on this evening, you can be notified and you can finish your self-love, self-pleasure meditation. Bye.